welcome to Cornish Walking Trails. Today we're going to St Michael's Mount. <laughs> Beautiful, isn't it? Whenever we've visited, it's left us with a little bit of magic. But there have been some unpopular changes in the last few years and we're going to take a look at those today. Firstly, the car park. And therefore, it's one of these AMPR managed car parks. No ticket, no entry. Do you have tickets yet for today? And your pet dogs are banned in the summer now. We'll also look at the food and consider is it tasty, value for money, and did we enjoy it? Out of ten? It seems that not all visitors are leaving with a little bit of magic. Has the mouth lost its sparkle? In this video, we'll be taking a deeper look at the comments on TripAdvisor, both good and bad. More importantly, we will be taking our own tour to gain a current visitor point of view. How many stars will we give it? What are you going to give it then? So Out of five? I, I or are you going would, to sum it up? I would sum it up by saying... Let's take a proper look and find out if it's worth it. St Michael's Mount is a unique mansion perched on a lofty, isolated mass of rock. Separated from Marazine at high water by about 400 yards of sea, but at low water, connected with the mainland by a stone causeway. Its solitariness and grandeur suggest something of the romantic story that has been woven around its venerable, weather-worn walls during hundreds of years. Today it is one of the premier attractions in Cornwall, and photos of it are seen all over the world. The mount is jointly owned between the National Trust and Lord and Lady St Levin and they continue to live in the majority of the castle. If you glance at TripAdvisor, St Michael's Mount scores 4.5 stars out of a possible 5. A perfect day. Great view of the coastline. Must visit. As one of Cornwall's iconic tourist attractions with nearly 350,000 visitors a year, it seems to be scoring well. Or is it? Rip off, National Trust. No dog, no visit. Greed has taken over. A deeper delve reveals that in August 2022, it only scored 3.3. That's 35 visitors giving only 116 stars. So what is going wrong? Common complaints are the management of the car park, overcrowding and queuing, greed and overpricing, and the recently introduced summer dog ban. As we go around St Michael's Mount, we'll keep these in mind, bringing up some of the comments in more detail. Firstly, let's look at car parking. St Michael's Mount website suggests you park in the Longstay car park, which is the first car park on your right as you arrive in Marazion travelling from Penzance. And I'm now in that car park. You must be aware it's privately managed by initial parking and therefore it's one of these AMPR managed car parks so they will take a picture of your time of entry and time of exit and you must pay for the duration of your stay if you decide that you don't want to stay you must turn around within 10 minutes and leave according to st michael's mount website a visit to the mount will probably take four hours so you need to pay five pounds for up to five hours all of the machines are set up to take coin and card and Apple Pay. You've also got the app that you can pay by. So there are one or two comments on TripAdvisor that people have been stung with some nasty fines or extra penalty charges. Fiona H says, beware dodgy parking technology unable to pay, large fine. Jess M said, read or you will get caught out. She'd paid cash at the ticket machine but no receipt was issued. A week later she had a demand for £100. So both of those comments seem to be about the failure of technology and being reliant on a computer to monitor it all. Having visited the car park, we noticed that there was clear good signage and there was plenty of machines to pay. We also thought that the camera was really well placed for you to see it. I agree. I also thought that the charges were reasonable and there was lots of different ways you can pay. And also in that car park, everybody needs to pay, yeah. including National Trust members. If you do receive a parking charge notice, we recommend you read Martin Lewis's article for advice. He states they are merely invoices. And if you think you can park in Marazion, think again. Everything is double yellow lines, it's really narrow lanes, and it's not even worth going up there and trying to do it. Believe me. 
If you are still not confident with the car park or if you prefer public transport, you could catch a bus from Penzance. Moving on from car parking, let's consider the complaints about queues and overcrowding. So we're back to join the loads, there's hundreds of people. Maybe hundreds is a bit of an exaggeration, but there are definitely tens of people walking across the causeway. So we've heard We've seen online in TripAdvisor that there's a lot of complaints about the queuing. In August 2022, Callan C posted a conga line I didn't much enjoy. They go on to say that getting to the island is quite a slow walk. We've got a time slot booked as recommended, so let's go and join the queue. Getting to the island is either by walking across the causeway at low tide or by boat at high tide. Using the boat is an additional cost to your ticket, and we will cover this later in the video. St Michael's Mount is in the top 20 National Trust most popular sites to visit in the UK. So it's going to be busy. We've read online that can be 340,000 people visiting every year. Need to watch your step. Dude, isn't it? I love this bit. I do? Yeah, it's just so <laughs> magical, isn't it? About walking across the causeway. And the castle's there. It's beautiful, isn't it? You. Especially on a day like today. And the water's just gone out, so it's still a bit damp. Oh, Sarah. Yeah. It's my real favourite bit now. What's that? Watching all the people having to park when the vehicles come down the causeway. <laughs> Jumping out of the way. It's a lot more fun when the water's sort of in as well. <laughs> yeah. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen, get out of the way. Basically, it's the same van, they just go up and down all day just to annoy people. It's not the worst walk anyway. Does that work quite well, actually? Did you? Yeah. It's a little bit of a key, but we were through it quite quickly. We were yeah. there for about what, three or four minutes? Yeah. 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 So far, so good. Best book them before you arrive, oh, I yes. think. Oh, yes. Yeah. You cannot come onto the island without a ticket. That's the key thing to understand. You do need a ticket. If you're National Trust membership, then it's part of your membership. You can come in. But you do, even then, need to book a ticket. Part of today's visit is to see is it worth it? How much is too much? Pricing has gone up again this year. We'll put details of the pricing here now. As National Trust members, you can visit as part of your membership. However, if you do not have National Trust member, these ticket prices will apply. As you can see on screen, there are three types of tickets, castle only, gardens only, or a castle and garden combi. An adult ticket for castle and garden combi is £26 in May 2023. As you'd expect, there's a range of comments. Best day ever. Lovely. A good day out, but overpriced. Expensive. Expensive and crowded. Greed has taken over. Rip off National Trust. Now let's get up to the castle and show you what's on offer for your ticket price. The giant's well. I didn't know it'd been poorly. <laughs> so to keep you entertained going up here, you're looking at your feet anyway. You are. And they've put a little heart-shaped stone part way up, haven't they? Found you it. Just bring the kids over here. We'll yeah. Part of the challenge to see if you can find it, isn't it? Yeah, and it's quite tiny, actually. So they do suggest on the website to wear sensible footwear going up here. And yeah. It, it is quite steep, obviously. Yeah. Um, they don't recommend it for people with any mobility issues. No so, flip-flops so. either, isn't it? No, and it's not suitable for people in wheelchairs and things like that, is it? No. Bird song is amazing today. It's starting to get really high now. We're in the canopy of the trees, look. Can I just say as well, Sarah, I've noticed they put benches in. Yeah. Yeah, so this is a nice touch actually because, yeah. you know, if, if you want to. Now that I'm getting older. Well, you know. I'll, I'll beat you to it. Oh. There we go. It's in the shade as well. Nice place to sit, isn't it? It is. Just rest whilst you're coming up here. Watch everybody else struggle. There are lots of positive comments about the mount. Here are a few. Rob Foolery says a place to be treasured. The castle is fascinating. The views of it and from it are stunning. The history, artifacts and works of art and furniture are a great treasure. And he goes on to say, I found the staff friendly and well informed. A great view of the coastline. Here 
Here are some of the less positive comments. The Globetrotters from Norwich says, OK, but expensive for what it is. And the few rooms you do see are interesting, but value for money is not much. Expensive, rushed, herded like cattle. This comment written in August 2022 said, having visited St Michael's before, I was somewhat disappointed. Disappointed to find it was massively overcrowded and only took half an hour to go around all the rooms. There aren't many. Is it worth £14? Nope, absolutely not. The Mount is jointly owned between the National Trust and Lord and Lady St Levin and they continue to live in the majority of the castle. There's no doubt this is an impressive sight. A castle in the sea on a triangle of granite with the most stunning views. But part of today's visit is to see is it worth it? We're of course happy to answer any questions you have. There's also some guide leaflets at the front, they are free for you to take, or we do have the QR code started about as well. And then we do just ask that you please don't touch anything or have any food or drink whilst you're inside. Photos absolutely fine, just please don't flash on any cameras. And it is all on a one-way system for you starting straight through this way. Next is the Chevy Chase Hall, named after the beautiful frieze in plaster that goes all the way round the room. And just be warned, please don't touch the table one lady was publicly but politely admonished for doing so. I really felt for her. This is the smoking room, one of my favourite rooms, mostly because of the fantastic view. If you look carefully, you can glimpse other rooms in the rest of the castle. Upon leaving the smoking room, you emerge onto the south terrace. Below you is where the family lives in their apartments. I think this is where you really get the sense of being in a castle on an outcrop of rock in the middle of the sea. The views from here are just sublime. And you get glimpses of the garden which has been designed to be seen from above. Right, you go that way, I'll go this way. Okay. Under our feet. Oh really? Cantilevers. Oh gosh. The chapel is dedicated to St Michael and was first built in 1135 when the mount was a priory and it's still used for part of the year for services today. Here you get a glimpse of the blue drawing room where the housekeeper entertained Queen Victoria and Prince Albert. Yeah, sons. Yeah, so exactly that, the two are Lord Lady St. Levin and then their two sons are the new Lord Lady St. Levin are the ones who live in the castle. Um, essentially underneath the uh, South Terrace out there, that is the east wing of the castle on five storeys, which is their private quarters. Mm -hmm. Five storeys? Yeah. Finally, the map room with old maps of Cornwall on the wall. Corridors full of old etchings and prints, all related to Cornwall by the looks of things. Then along the corridor, down a staircase, 
and once again you're outside. Right, the boat's there. This is the half that you don't get to go in, which is still the private residence of the St Alban family. In fact, there's only a handful of rooms that you can pass through and some corridors. On the day that we visited, we found that we spent about 40 minutes from start to finish exploring the inside of the castle. Well, our comment from earlier said it was overcrowded and disappointing as it took half an hour to go around all the rooms and it wasn't worth £14. Now £15 as of 2023. Are they right? Is it value for money? Or is it more about the experience than the number of rooms you go through? Let us know what you think in the comments. Your initial thoughts, having been through the process of visiting right. St Michael's now? Yeah, well we've been before haven't we? Yes. Um, I didn't think it was too bad today to no. be honest with you. I mean it is May, it's not the height of the summer season. No, but it was um, still busy. And it's a weekday, but we're here as well. It was busy, so I could see that they wait for enough people to come into the room. The guy then starts to do a little presentation. Yeah. It's quite engaging. Yeah. And um, that probably lasts minute for a, two, a minute. Isn't it? To, yeah, a minute and a half. But then they, you can see they naturally get a group together, they finish a speech, the group then moves through, the yeah. next group kind of comes in. So it's it kind of like works. crowd management without you knowing. Yeah. So there's one or two moments when I would have liked a little bit more time. Yeah. And every time I come here, I notice something different. <laughs> like most visitor attractions, St Michael's Mount has a couple of gift shops on the island for those seeking a memento. With the cost of living challenges in mind, we took a look. I think you're too old for that, Andrew. <laughs> Stop it. I'm going to play a game with you now. What's that? Did you find out how much the fudge was? No. I did. How much? Three ninety nine. Oh, that's did you find bad. out how much the biscuits were? No. How much, how much was the biscuits? Three ninety nine. <gasps> did you find out how much a gem necklace was? Uh, I didn't. How much was it? Three ninety nine. Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> do you know how much a fridge mag magnet was in there? No. Go on, have a guess. Three ninety nine. Yeah. <laughs> It's 3.99. <laughs> Bring four quid, you're right. <laughs> we noticed this week there was a survey out about children's pocket money being £6.50 a week on average. Okay. And there was plenty of things in there actually that a little girl, a little boy could go in and buy. Yeah. Although the little figurines, the little princesses and stuff were £8. Right. So right. a little bit more. So there's a variety of yeah. items in there which were different, you know, Certainly some pocket money stuff in there. Yeah, yeah. very good. Yeah. So now we're going to try and find some lunch. The Harbour Loft is afternoon teas and you've got a free book. Yes. So we're going to go over to the other side of the island where the cafe is and see what they've got on offer. If you've never watched one of our videos before then welcome to our channel. If you enjoy Cornwall and you like walking then please consider subscribing. We upload a video most Fridays about Cornwall and days out. I'm looking forward to doing the garden because we've been here many times but we've never been around the garden. Yeah, some people say it's not worth doing because it's, just, it's designed to be seen from above. We'll find out after lunch. It's a collector tray. Choose your items for your lunch. Your coffees, pick up your coffees and away you go. Step four, eat it. <laughs> The Island Cafe offers a range of hot and cold drinks, sandwiches, pasties, cakes and cream teas. I didn't think they had any gluten free cake. I was running around the table and now you found me one. The carrot cake? Yeah. That's what they call an unboxing. How big is my pasty? Yeah. Might need a hand. Oh. It's not coming out. It's not coming out, Sarah. Yeah. This is the Cornish pasty. Mm -hmm. The St. Michael's one. Mm -hmm. 5 95 First um, impressions? Well, I'm hungry. Your face was saying so it. I'll eat it. It's 5 95 It's more than I'd normally pay for a pasty. Yeah. Um, looks a bit flat. It, it does, doesn't it? It's popped up a bit. Looks like it's been run over. It does look good. <laughs> good description. I'm sure it looks worse where it's going. Yeah. There's flaky pastry as well by the looks of it. 
It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> Passable. Out of ten. Five. Oh dear. Six, maybe at a push. <laughs> I'm hungry. We'll leave it there. How are you going on? Gluten free bread. It's definitely gluten free bread. It's rocket and a red, red pepper hummus. The trouble is, Google Twitter is really dry. It's just not enough filling. Out of ten. Four. Oh, your pasty, you seemed a bit disappointed. I was a bit disappointed. I was hungry. It was tasty. It was a bit flat. It, yeah. it was. I think it might have sweated a bit in the bag that it was in. Yeah. And I thought it was quite expensive for what it was actually. I paid nearly yeah. six pounds for that. I think I kind of expect to pay a bit more coming over here. Yeah. If you'd gone into Philps in, yeah. in Marisine, they were four forty-five. Yes, they were. For a, a medium steak. Yeah. So you've paid an extra one pound fifty for the privilege of eating a pasty on the and island. And you kind of expect that in yeah. all honesty, don't you? Yeah. I was very grateful to have a gluten-free sandwich, and um, I was very hungry, so it went down eventually. Yeah, it looked a bit dry though. <laughs> Unfortunately, that's the nature of gluten-free bread, which is kind of reassuring. I know it's gluten-free. Yeah, but at least you found something to eat, which isn't is sometimes difficult when we go out, isn't it? Yeah. So, not such a high-scoring lunch. It's a bit of a, a, a Marks and Spencer style get you through the system theme, isn't it? In there, you pick up your lunch, you pay for it, you wait for your drinks, and you're out the door. If it was Marks and Spencer. It'd be, this is no ordinary lunch. This is no ordinary pasty. This pasty has the succulent beef from the finest cattle. Oh. Don't know if they can hear me, it's so windy. That Let's sounds go. really good though. Where am I going to get that from? <laughs> Not here, evidently. <laughs> Let's go find the garden. You're eating in the cafe. Top tip, come towards this green patch, come beside the building there, and you come out into this lovely lawned area. I've got some picnic tables, a bit more sheltered and a bit warmer. Blowy. Not everyone will choose to visit the garden, saying it's designed to be viewed from above. But if gardens are your thing and you're just being put off by the additional ticket price, let's see if it's worth it. Stunning. So many sedums. They've really gone with a succulent sedum theme, haven't they? Amazing, isn't it? Not a weed inside. Everything's in flower at once, isn't it? This is the perfect month to visit, you know, <laughs> yeah, in May. I think we've just struck lucky. <laughs> it's stunning, it really is. So those people that say it's only worth looking at from the back? Yeah. Are no. they missing out? Yeah. 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 The rocks act like a natural backdrop to banks and banks of flowers so it's all terraced and even the sides of the terrace are planted. Beautiful. You've got spiky ones, you've got pink fluffy ones, you've got rosette ones and then you've got some spectacular geometric ones like that one over there. I love that. The way the shadows are falling on the leaves it is amazing. Ha ha ha, I love it. It is beautiful. Absolutely stunning. I am so excited. There's flowers everywhere. So this little walled kitchen garden is the bit you can see from the terrace up above. It's all silver grey contrasted with green leaves. <laughs> I just can't wait to see somebody up there. I'm going to wave to them. No, nobody's going to come into view. Oh, what a shame. Ooh, that looks interesting, Sarah. We have this book from a Canadian patron. Hi, Bill. Thank you so much for sending us this I think it must be a couple of years ago we've been kind of sat on it and it's a collection of articles written by an American that visited Cornwall in 1880 as a tourist and he visited St Michael's Mount 
and he says that the high cliffs are not far enough on either side but in the immediate vicinity the shore is low and the lo loftiest object is St Michael's Mount, the famous Pyramid of Granite, with a castle on its highest point some 230 feet above the sea. The mount is ideally picturesque and suggestive of romance. Isolated and not more than a few hundred yards from the shore, it looms up in solitary magnificence encircled by the sea. Such a beautiful description and it is, it is romantic and it is isolated but at the same time you know that land is only a stone's throw away but when that tide comes in it might as well be a mile away. Anybody who's watched House of Dragon, the prequel, might recognise this little courtyard. I'm pretty sure that they use that in the filming. We know that they use St Michael's Mount, but we're just not quite sure where. We did ask a guide and she was completely bemused, so we're going to have to do it from memory. And if we just happen to stumble across it, we'll say, oh yeah, that was where they filmed House of Dragon. It's very good. We're really not organised for this one, are not, we? Not at all. No. <laughs> draped over the rocks. It's like a curtain, it's like a piece of cloth spun with the most delicious colours. Absolutely wonderful. I can't believe it. I've never seen anything like it. You just almost want to touch it. I think we've reached as high as we can wander as the staff entrance now. But wow! This is stunning. I'm really glad that we made the effort to come into the garden as well. It's really lived up to my expectation. In fact, it's surpassed my expectations. <laughs> Returning to our list, the final item to look at is the summer pet dog ban. The dog ban was brought in in October 2021 and made it to the national press. It continues to cause upset among dog owners today. I didn't like the fact that dogs were urinating on the island. Well, they were causing brown patches on the... the, the urine was burning the grass. Yes. They were causing brown patches on the nice lawns that had got laid out. So they decided to ban dogs, which is fair enough. It's private land, isn't it? Pet dogs are banned from the entire island between the 1st of April and the 30th of September. The only exception is for assistance dogs. In the winter season, dogs are allowed but only around the village and the harbour area. They're not allowed in the gardens or in the castle. This has led, as you would expect, to a lot of outraged dog owners leaving comments on TripAdvisor. But what do you think? Let us know in the comments. We're going to make a quick leg it back now. Yeah. Oh, no, it's fine, thanks. <laughs> because that is signalling that they're getting the boat out ready to do boat crossings. Look, it's over there. I know, I'm going to film it now. Oh, are you? Yeah. I don't know if I've got it in shot. <laughs> but the causeway soon will be covered. I'm prepared. I don't know quite what Andrew's going to do. He's got shoes and long trousers on. I've got flip-flops in my bag. If the tide covers the causeway, you will need to purchase boat tickets to get back to the mainland at an additional cost of £2.80 per adult, £1.50 per child. Something to factor in if you're on a budget. And of course, if you can time it with the tides, you can use the causeway to get to the island and return, then you do save yourself the cost of the boat fare, which if you've got to do it both ways, can add quite a lot to your day. I've forgotten to do it again. What's that? Oh, if you've enjoyed today's video, please give us a thumbs up. It helps <laughs> with the algorithm on YouTube. And if you haven't done so already, consider subscribing to us. Cornish Walking Trails on YouTube. It's free. We take you summer every single week in Cornwall. Normally a walk or a beautiful place like this. So strictly speaking, we can't score this because it's not a walk, but we could do it in TripAdvisor style and give it stars five out of five okay yeah I, yeah I agree with that I mean, what would your comment on TripAdvisor be my comment would be I've had a lovely day out the highlight of my day was a garden yeah <laughs> um, I would mark it down slightly because I thought the cost in the cafe was slightly expensive yeah and I think the quality of food it was okay yeah uh, and I was hungry I agree yeah uh, so I'm definitely gonna mark it down a little bit we're gonna get knocked over here Sarah I know in true I know, vlogger I know. style we have to carry on regardless 
Okay, we've survived. Everything's fine. Right, we can carry on there. Okay. So, what are you going to give it then? So Out of five? I, or are you going would, to sum it up? I would sum it up by saying that not a lot has changed in the castle from the last time I visited, but that's obviously we've visited a few times now. So you're still going through the same rooms, but the guides are so knowledgeable yep. and they give you little snippets of gems of information which are fantastic. They've obviously researched their subject really well. And the garden for me was a highlight today. Like you say, the food, maybe if it was a school report, I would say could do better. Do you remember getting that on your school report? I do, report? I a lot. Yeah, yeah. Um, I was grateful there was something gluten free there to eat, but um, yeah, it was expensive for what we got. So, but there are picnic tables, so my advice would be if we did this again, bring a picnic and I would then give it five out of five. So on a value for money front though, you know, obviously to pay to come in and to go around and then the money that you're going to spend when you're here. Yeah. Do you think it's good value for money? Well, that comes back to that little nugget. Do you have National Trust membership? If you've got Trust membership, we've got Trust membership, so yeah. we didn't technically have to give any money today, but we've already paid the National Trust for that privilege, haven't we? £139, yeah. I yeah. think, for our membership this year. So would I have paid £52 to get in there today? I've had a good day, yes, but with the food on top, we're looking at, at what, £75, £80? Yeah. Then that makes it an expensive day. I think so, if you're down here on your holiday, and this is going to be a highlight of your holiday, yeah. I think it's worth it. I agree, I and it's if you... unique, isn't it? It is so special. It is. it is, you'll have a magical day out. Yeah. A day you'll remember for a very long time. And where else? Is there another St Michael's Mount? I think they can maybe be cheeky and put that little bit of extra cost on everything. So, out of five, Sarah? Five. Uh, I'm going with four. Oh. So it gets four and a half on TripAdvisor. Yes, there you go. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> and until next time, we'll see you then. Bye. Bye.